The University of Maine wants to change the housing industry with a little help from some cool new tech. This one bed, one bath, 500 square foot home was made of recyclable materials. And the best part, it was entirely 3D printed. This is the world's largest thermoplastic 3D printer. Dubbed the factory of the future. We built everything. This massive printer stretches the entire length of a warehouse. Right now, our goal is to target affordable housing. It's a national crisis. The U.S. is about 7 million houses short for low-income families. This was all printed in the lab, transported to the site. Oh, my goodness. The cabin-like walls made with actual wood, an abundant resource here in Maine. This is the wood-filled bioplastic. So the wood is what gives it this color. If you didn't have the wood filler, it would be like a clear plastic. That wood filler is made from sawmill residue, a byproduct that would normally go to a landfill or get burned. But here, it's used to help build a foundation strong enough to mount cabinets and shelves. And so it's wild because you can see, like, this is such a stark curve, and then it just blends seamlessly into this yep. wall. So there's, like, st structure in the floor, the walls, and the ceiling. And so you can watch it coming up here. So this is at the small scale. Yeah, this is both, this both is the side wall, but then it curves over and forms the roof. And it all, and all like, right seals up, close. and it's a whole six-sided. We call it volumetric modular printing. We can get much better... Uh, shapes, formworks, curves, double curves that are so much harder and time intensive to do with wood. And we can do it with just click of a mouse. But the real game changer, replicating those unique designs in a fraction of the time it takes to build a normal house. Our goal today is to print a house every 48 hours. One house every two days with, I mean, how many people are working on that? On the print crew, it's probably two guys so that's, that's about the team that runs the, the printer. Greg insists the creation of these high-skilled jobs won't minimize the need for labor workers. You still need all the regular trades to come in, the electrical team. If you're going to have drywall, then you have the drywall team come in. If you have roofing or other fixtures, those sorts of things. And while the foundation is still being laid, the University of Maine is hopeful they can help shape the future of affordable housing. My hope for how it can change the industry is that we move away from materials that are petrochemical-based, and we move to materials that are more natural based. And we do it in a way that's safe for people to live in. I want my kids to be able to have one of these homes and live in one of these homes. That's my goal. The part of that tour that you didn't see that wasn't included in the piece is where I asked, when can I put an offer in? These houses are truly so impressive, but the timeline for when they'll actually be available is still TBD because there's building codes, assessments that they have to sort out. But the ultimate goal of the project is that the housing is truly affordable, which is really a challenge in the market right now. Now, as for the labor piece of it, uh, the researchers point out that construction workers actually are seeing a shortage right now, something that I've covered before. But there is an increase of high skilled workers that can operate the 3D printing technology. And so this project is aiming to balance out and fill those gaps. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.